Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back. Thank you so much for clicking on the video. I can think of a couple of reasons why you're watching this video right now. You might be thinking of trying Destiny for the first time ever, going into the game as a new player, or maybe you're trying to decide if it's worth coming back after such a long break, or you tried it, you have absolutely no idea what's going on, you don't know where to start, and you kind of just gave up on it. The good news is now is the perfect time to get back into Destiny 2 with the release of the highly anticipated Destiny to Lightfall DLC. This expansion brings a ton of quality of life changes to make the player experience a lot better, a lot easier, and way more enjoyable. The best thing about Destiny 2 is that it's free to play, which means it's accessible to everybody. There are expansions in Destiny 2 that will lock you out of certain types of content if you don't purchase these expansions, but use the free to play feature as an excuse to try the game out play it for a couple days, and if you do enjoy it, maybe consider purchasing some of the expansions, especially Destiny 2 Lightfall. I understand this game can be very overwhelming and difficult to understand, which is why today I'm bringing you guys the Destiny 2 Beginner's Guide 2023 Edition. As soon as you start playing Destiny 2, you have to make your first very important decision, which is choosing your character class. You have three different choices to choose from, the Titan, the Hunter, and the Warlock. If you choose the Titan class, you will be the backbone of the team, focusing primarily on survivability. The Hunter class is all about mobility, and in my personal opinion, even though this may be the most difficult class to use for new players, it's definitely one of the best. The Hunter's mobility is fantastic for getting out of near-death situations or even being quick on your feet to grab objectives for certain missions. The Warlock is the middle ground between the Titan and the Hunter. You won't have as much mobility as the Hunter and maybe not as much survivability as the Titan, but what you do offer your team is utility and stability, which is great for keeping your teammates alive. Make sure you choose your class wisely because you will not be able to change this. The only way to play as another class is to make another character. One of the best things they added with Destiny 2 Lightfall is the introduction of Guardian Ranks, which is perfect for new players. When you are in orbit, click on View Journey. This is going to give you a solid understanding of where your character is and what you have to do to progress further. You can see here my hunter is currently rank 6 veteran and for me to rank up to rank 7 elite there's a couple of things I need to do and the best thing about this guardian rank system it gives you guidance now guidance was one thing that was missing from destiny 2 and it was the big reason why a lot of people quit for the longest time it was just too difficult for new players to understand what they needed to do next to level up their character and progress further in each campaign for example, once you start the game, you will begin at rank 1 New Light. After finishing the first quest, which is the New Light quest, A Guardian Rises, you will reach rank 2. You will move into rank 3 with a couple of different objectives here, primarily focusing on exploration. You can see here, explore Neptune, explore EDZ, and explore Nessus. Skipping over to rank 6 where I'm at, everything is pretty self-explanatory. Now, for example, in order for me to reach rank 7, I have to complete all of these objectives to the left. For example, right here, completing the Lightfall campaign, which is exactly what I'm doing right now. This brings me to my next topic, which is navigating and understanding the menus in Destiny. Destiny 2. When you press start to access the menu, the first thing you're going to see is your character screen. This is where you can change your weapons, apply different shaders, change your gear, even your subclass, and so on. Since you're going to be spending most of your time on the character screen, I think it's important to understand what everything on this screen means. At the top left here, this is where you choose your subclass. Now currently, at the moment, especially with the introduction of Strand in Lightfall, there is five subclasses. The one I have active right here is Stasis, the purple one is Void, the blue one is Arc, and the orange one is Solar. The new one is Strand, which is what I don't have unlocked yet, but it's going to be in this fourth spot here. The subclasses are actually very important, especially when you get into endgame and fight against enemies that have certain resistances. For example, if an enemy has a solar shield, you'll want to use a solar subclass to do more damage and get rid of that shield as quick as possible. The same thing applies to Void. 
Arc, Stasis, and Strand. I should also mention that each subclass has different abilities for your character, so depending on your playstyle and your overall build, you're definitely going to spend some time trying to figure out what makes the most sense for your playstyle for your class. Each subclass also has different super abilities that can be useful in different types of situations depending on which one you choose. Right below the subclass, you have your primary weapon, your secondary, your heavy, and your ghost. Now, one important thing to know here, just like the subclasses, we have void, stasis, arc, solar, and strand. Certain weapons also do certain types of damage. For example here, my rocket launcher does void damage, which is going to be extremely useful against enemies that are weak to void. Another example here, I have a secondary that's a pistol that does solar damage, so I would use this weapon against enemies that have solar shields and so on. Just like every other looter shooter, you do have a power level. It's called a light level in Destiny 2. You can see here, I am currently 1634. And obviously, as I continue to play the game and I equip new gear pieces, my light level is going to increase. Right below the light level, you can see the guardian rank, which is something we already went over. But one thing to know here is the different stats on your character. Now, you have six different stats here, which are very important, especially when you're looking at the gear that you want to equip on your character. For example, these gloves here give us plus seven mobility, plus 17 resilience, plus two recovery, and so on. Now, if you don't understand what these things are, it may be difficult to create a build once you get to end game. So let's take a closer look at all six of these. For the first one here, for the hunter specifically, we have mobility, reduces the cooldown of your class ability, increases your movement speed and maximum jump height. Right below that we have Resilience, which increases the amount of damage you can take before dying and increases your shield capacity, so this one here is all about survivability. Below that we have Recovery, which increases the speed at which you regain lost health, so the higher your recovery, the faster you can regenerate health. Below that we have Discipline. Discipline decreases the cooldown time of your grenades, allowing you to use them more often. We also have Intellect, which decreases the cooldown of your super ability, allowing you to use it more often. And lastly, we have Strength. Strength decreases the cooldown time of your melee ability, allowing you to use it more often. The next thing I wanted to do is give you guys an overview of the Director. Now, when you first go to Orbit, and you open the director for the first time, this can be extremely overwhelming. There's a lot going on here and it can be difficult to understand what exactly you have to click on. So let's go through it piece by piece. First things first, you have different planets here. You have Neptune, Europa, EDZ, Cosmodrone, the moon, Nessus, Dreaming City, etc. Now, depending on which mission you activate, different missions are going to take place on different planets. For example, if I go to quests, now you can see all of these quests are divided by expansions. You have New Light, Lightfall, Seasonal, Playlists, Exotics, The Past, and so on. But just to give you guys an example of where you need to go and what you need to do to find the mission that you activated, the one that you're tracking, it's very simple. So for example, I'm going to pick this one right here, the Witch Queen Complete the Mirror Mission. So if I go ahead and press X, I'm going to track the mission, right? And if I go back to destinations, you can see here that this mission is lighting up green. So I have to go to Savathon's throne world to continue on and play this mission, which is exactly right here. You can see the mirror mission. At that point, I would choose a landing zone that's close to the mission so I don't have to travel far, which is right here, the Quagmire landing zone. At the very top here, you have Vanguard, Gambit, Crucible and Legends. Now Vanguard is your Vanguard playlist where you're going to be completing strikes with other players. This is going to queue you up for matchmaking and you're going to play any random strike. This is going to help you increase your Vanguard rank. Same with Gambit. Gambit is a game mode that's PvEVP. I believe it's locked behind a certain expansion so you might have to purchase it to play this, but the same principles are going to apply. As you play Gambit game modes, Gambit matches, your Gambit rank is going to increase. Now Crucible, Crucible is Destiny 2's PvP. So when you choose Crucible, you have a couple of different options here. You can choose Competitive, Rumble, Rift, 
you can do team quick play, and even a private match. Now, as you play PvP, your Crucible rank is going to increase, which is going to give you more rewards. Similar to Vanguard, as you do more Vanguard missions, your Vanguard rank is going to increase, which is going to give you more rewards. For example, if we go to Vanguard here, we have a couple different options. We have Vanguard Ops, which is the one you're probably going to be playing the most. You also have Nightfall Strikes, which are more difficult, but you can see here, you get way better gear and the recommended power level is a lot higher. And then you also have Grandmaster Nightfall Strikes, which is the most difficult content in the game, but it's gonna give you the best rewards. The last one here, Legends, just gives you access to some of the older raids, which is pretty cool. Now, one thing you'll notice here, you'll see a gold star on some of the items here. Now, this is a dungeon. The one I'm hovering over right now, Prophecy, is a dungeon. Now, you can see here, I have a weekly challenge, which is what that gold star means. My weekly challenge is to complete this dungeon. If I complete this dungeon, I will get Pinnacle Gear and Pinnacle Gear is the highest rarity loot that you can find in Destiny. Another example, we have another gold star in the Dreaming City. Now, if we go to the top here, we find the star, and you can see here we have another weekly challenge to complete this raid. Once this raid is completed, we will get even more Pinnacle Gear. And Pinnacle Gear is ideally what you would want to work for to increase your light level even further. So we took a closer look at some of the different planets, some of the different playlists that we have to offer here, different objectives on the map, and how to activate quests. This will make way more sense if we take a trip to the tower, which is basically the social hub for your guardian. When you get to the tower, you're gonna to see other players, other guardians here talking to different NPCs, and I wanna give you guys a solid understanding of who you need to talk to and when you need to talk to them. So we're gonna start at the left here and we're gonna to speak to the postmaster. Now the postmaster is somebody that's going to give you items that you forgot or maybe you didn't pick up during your mission. So you can see here, I have two lost items. I have an engram, a legendary engram, and a shotgun. Now the postmaster is gonna give these to me because I forgot to pick them up. Right next to the postmaster, you have Tess, which is basically where you go if you want to buy microtransactions, right? New skins, new sparrows, different materials, whatever it may be. You can also buy different expansions here as well. Now, as we make our way to the third NPC, if you guys remember, we have a Vanguard playlist where we complete strikes with different players. Now, Commander Zavala here, the Titan Vanguard, is who you need to speak to after you finish strikes in the Vanguard playlist. So just as a friendly reminder, if we go ahead and open the director here and we go to destinations, we have the Vanguard playlist where we can choose between Vanguard Ops, Nightfall, and Grandmaster Nightfall. Now, as you do these strikes, your Vanguard rank is going to increase. You can see at the top right here, my Vanguard rank is Guardian rank three. Every time you reach a new rank, Commander Zavala is going to give you rewards, primarily engrams. You can see here, I'm almost to my next rank, and I almost get a new Vanguard engram reward. If you look below, you have additional rank rewards. For example, if you want more enchantment cores, you need to reach rank 4. If you want a new shader, you have to reach rank 7. If you want enchantment prisms, you need to reach rank 10, and so on. These NPCs also have bounties, which I highly recommend grabbing whenever you get a chance to. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna grab a couple of these, and after I complete them, it's gonna give me more XP towards my Vanguard rank, which means more rewards from me. They're also very easy. So this one right here, Daily Bounty, defeat multiple combatants at a time with your super. All you need to do is get two multi-kills. Once you get two multi-kills, the bounty will be completed and you will get additional XP towards your Vanguard rank. So now that you have a solid understanding of who Commander Zavala is and what he can do for you, let's go ahead and move to the next NPC to the right over here, which focuses primarily on Crucible, Lord Shax, the Crucible Handler. Similar to Commander Zavala's Vanguard rank, Lord Shax gives you a Crucible rank. So the more you play Crucible, the more your rank is going to increase. And these same principles are going to apply, right? Every time you reach a new rank, you're gonna get an engram. As you progress through the ranks, you get additional rewards, more engrams, enchantment cords, 
specific shaders. And just like Commander Zavala, Lord Shaxx also has bounties. Now, since this primarily focuses on PvP, all of these bounties are focused on player versus player combat. So you can see here, defeat opponents using an ability. So when you kill three players using an ability, you will get additional XP towards your Crucible rank. Right next to Lord Shax, you have your Vault. Now, the Vault is used to store different weapons, for example, exotics that you don't feel like carrying. And one of the coolest things about the Vault, it's accessible between characters. So if you have a Titan, a Hunter, and a Warlock, you can apply these weapons to each character. So I can log out of my Hunter, log into my Titan class, access the Vault, and grab this exotic right here, the Bad Juju. Right behind the vault area is the gunsmith. Now, his name is Banshee44, he's the gunsmith, and every time you deconstruct weapons, it's going to contribute to your guardian gunsmith rank. Now, I've been deconstructing a lot of gear, which is why I have a new reward right here. I just got a new fusion rifle. Similar to Vanguard and Crucible ranks, as you deconstruct weapons, your gunsmith rank is going to increase, allowing you to unlock additional rank rewards and also, you guessed it, more bounties. Right across from the gunsmith, you have the cryptarch, and the cryptarch is basically where you want to go to once you receive engrams that need to be decoded which means you're not going to know the contents of that engram until you go to the Cryptarch and he decrypts it for you so you can then use it. The last NPC that I think everybody should know about, especially if you're part of a clan, I highly recommend trying to join a clan. Being in a clan is going to give you additional rewards, which really helps out with increasing your overall light level. We're taking a trip right now to the clan steward. Now, when you're in a clan, you get access to clan bounties, and every time members of your clan complete certain objectives, for example, playing Crucible, completing raids, you get access to those rewards. You can see at the top here, I have a new reward, which is a clan engram Crucible. This means that players in my clan played Crucible, and after completing that certain objective, everyone in the clan gains access to a new Crucible engram. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. Hopefully I touched on all of the important things and hopefully after watching this video, you're more confident and you're more willing to jump into Destiny 2 and give it a try. If I missed anything that you think is important, please let us know in the comments below. We're all here to help each other out. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful in any way, shape or form, a thumbs up would be very much appreciated. Thank you guys so much. If you want to see more Destiny 2 content coming very soon, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and also turn on those bell notifications so you are notified every time I drop a new video.